I'd like to share some thoughts on science and religion. There are those who say they can coexist and are compatible with one another. Indeed the fact that there are not a few scientists who are also deeply religious is often cited as evidence for this. However, that a person can do science for a week and fall on his knees on Sunday when he beholds a frozen waterfall only tells us that human minds can compartmentalize and put on hold their hard-earned critical thinking skills. The existence of religious scientists tells us about human psychology and the idiosyncrasies of the human brain. It does not mean that science and religion are compatible. Science and religion are irreconcilable. The two are premised upon conflicting epistemologies, that is, ways of knowing. Science is rooted in churning out hypotheses that can be tested and falsified. Hypotheses and explanations which cannot be empirically determined to be true or false are not scientific. Religious ideas are usually of the latter kind. Take the claim that there is a being and this entity is composed of three persons. Right from the start we have problems. First there needs to be a definition of this entity. What is it? What are its properties? Then we'd need to find out whether this hypothesized entity is real. How do we go about doing this? Should we succeed in actually substantiating its existence we would then need to define what these so-called persons mean. If we manage to provide characterizations of these persons, we would then move on to determining whether the singular entity really is a multiplicity. This is a bit similar to finding out whether the claim that a highly intelligent life form with six stomachs, five eyes, four lungs, three heads, and two hearts is out there somewhere, is in fact true. Clearly, proving or disproving this will be almost impossible given the expanse of the universe and our extremely limited capability to study and explore every cubic meter of the cosmos. If we are told that the being which is one yet three is invisible and undetectable, then no one, including the person making the claim, can ever find out whether this entity is real or just made up. It should be noted that probabilities, though not essential, are of practical importance here. The idea that the planet Earth has no core and is in fact hollow has a very low probability of being true. So is the claim that there is biological life on the Sun. There are very scientific reasons for saying these are highly improbable. In a similar vein, the hypothesis that intelligent anthropomorphic entities exist in the Earth's atmosphere, as some ancients believed, is so highly improbable that they can be rejected as false. I said earlier that science and religion have different ways of knowing. This is being too kind. In reality religion has no valid epistemology. It has no proven method of knowing whether its theological hypotheses, pronouncements, dogmas, beliefs are true or not. Revelation, faith, and tradition are said to be ways of knowing. But are they? Revelation is merely a claim. We would still need evidence that the purported truth was in fact revealed by some superior non-human intelligence, and that which was conveyed really is true. Faith, which is defined as belief without evidence, is simply that. Rather clearly, no amount of believing will make something true if it isn't. That would be wishful thinking. And however old an idea may be will not make it any truer than it really is. Hence, an argument from tradition has no merit in the determination of the veracity of claims. Neither revelation, faith, nor tradition can be used to defend ideas. They are not valid ways of knowing. The lack of progress over the last several thousand years in finding which religion and which supernatural hypotheses are true, further shows us how religion does not possess valid epistemic methods. In fact, the number of religions and competing theological hypotheses have increased over time. Contrast that with hypotheses and models of the empirical world. We have advanced so much in our understanding of the universe that we are now discovering exosolar planets trillions of kilometers from our home. We've also been able to weigh the universe and have discovered that it is mostly likely a flat one, that galaxies will continue to accelerate away from each other until they exceed the speed of light. Science has progressed, it has continually pushed the boundaries between the known and the unknown, because it has valid and robust ways of verifying that something is true and ways of finding out what is false. 
religion underscores the importance of believing. Science emphasizes evidence to provide a solid foundation for understanding. Religion, unlike science, abhors truth, in the sense that while it may be a fount of ideas, it does not provide any proven means for determining the truth of those ideas. In short, science has the methods to mercilessly rid itself of bad ideas. Religion on the other hand has been forced in our day to become a refuge for untested and untestable ideas, as it continues to seek shelter in God of the Gaps hypothesis. Astronomer Carl Sagan once wrote, The reason science works so well is partly that built-in error-correcting machinery. There are no forbidden questions in science, no matters too sensitive or delicate to be probed, no sacred truths. And that is yet another reason religion and science are irreconcilable. Religion has sacred truths. In science, on the other hand, the only thing sacred is the search for truth, and our faithfulness to reality.